Welcome to Sharpen the Axe. Explore the bleeding edge of guitar and bass gear. Discover a sound uniquely your own and cut through the noise. With your hosts, Eric Lucero and Paul Berezetsky. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sharpen the Axe on Entertalk Radio, powered by Pitbull Audio. How's it going, Paul? Pretty good, pretty good. How are you? I'm chilling. How has your week been? Uh... Pretty good. Pretty good. Did a did a gig last night. Oh really? Oh yeah. shit. Where at? Uh, Peabody's. Peabody's. Where's that? Mr. Peabody's Encinitas. Oh. Uh, the same 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 place. I've been kind of playing every month or so, every few weeks with my band. I uh, gotcha. Aside from uh, the poor house and um, and the belly up, I'm rather ignorant on anything happening in North County at all. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a it's a little bar, but it gets it gets a good crowd in there always. Like people just dig, dig music. They stick around on Wednesday night. People are hanging out till midnight. All right. Yeah. All right. Cool. So you guys keep a late crowd going. That's awesome. Yeah. And what is the name of your band in case people out there want to check it out? Up Funk. Up Funk. Yep. Awesome. Right on. Um. Oh, before I, before I uh, uh, dive into the goodies we have around us, uh, I want to remind our listeners out there that. Uh, with Mission Engineering, we have the NAM Celebration Gear Giveaway. It's a full-on rig from Guitar to Amp. And uh, uh, again, another shout-out to, to Paul and James over at Mission Engineering for helping us get it together. But uh, you can go to our website, our Facebook page, or Mission Engineering's page uh, to enter. I believe uh, you can now. You can actually officially now enter, right? Yep, yep. it's officially kicked off. Just... Uh Sign up, put your, I think, just a name and email address, and pretty much you're off to the races. Sweet. And you can win a uh, ESP FRX 401 guitar. Uh, uh, let's see, a uh, Sup- even, oh yeah, Supro oh, Amp, Supro the 1600. 1600. Yes. And in, and in between that, you win a, uh, pe- a uh, pedal train Novo 24 pedal board, a uh, Eventide H9 Max, a uh, Mission Engineering. Uh, uh, expression pedal that I forgot the model name, but it's meant to go with the H9. You also win a Rewa Pro from them. You win a Paradox Effects uh, Fuzzy Cat, a uh, really awesome fuzz. And uh, well, I know I'm missing some in between. Uh, did you? Sorry, uh, did you mention the Eventide? The, uh, yes, the H9 the Max. H9 yeah. Max. And uh, ah. oh, the uh, Empress Reverb. Yes, that's right. Yeah, an Empress Reverb, which is a really, really cool unit. We'll bring a, uh, we'll bring that onto the show once uh, we get them back in stock at Pitbull Audio. Uh, and the, did you mention the Earthquaker devices? Oh wow, yeah, I'm forgetting, uh, I'm forgetting everything. <laughs> too it's too many uh, to remember. <laughs> right? Yeah, you really are really winning a full rig, and it's the uh, Earthquaker devices uh, Space Spiral Delay, which is uh, one of their newest offerings they showed at NAM this year, and it's a very trippy delay. I can't wait until we get them in the store. I didn't get enough time on them when I was mm-hmm. at the uh, at the NAM show. And uh, I also want to mention that uh, along with ESP, who's one of the prizes you win there, we are going to be having Bunny Brunel uh, do an in-store clinic at Pitbull Audio. Uh, I don't believe there is a scheduled exact date yet, but he is uh, releasing a new signature model through ESP, I, I believe an LTD, and I'm sure there is a Japanese-made uh, uh, ESP version as well. So, yeah, we're going to have that bass legend come in and shred it up at uh, Pitbull Audio in National City. Or you can also find me if you want to come in, talk gear, test something out, or looking for something. I am there Monday through Friday, except for Thursdays when I come up here to do this. Bunny Burnell, uh, he played with Chick Corea, correct? Is, or Herbie Hancock? Uh, I think Herbie Hancock. Uh, Chick Corea as well, I want to say. I, uh, Chick Corea, you can damn near roll off any name, and there's a good <laughs> chance they play with him at some point. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's uh, known as a session guy and a still live touring player as well, Bunny Brunell. And, and I, I, I saw amazing. a clinic of his a, a few years ago. Uh, oh yeah, it was pretty pretty rocking. All right, on awesome. Nice. Yeah, it's I uh, I can't recall if I've ever gotten to see him live. I don't think so. So it's going to be a treat for me to finally check that out and to meet the man himself. He's on a lot of the, some great funk jazz recordings yeah. that some some true classics. Uh, but yeah, we'll let you guys know when uh, that is happening and we will uh publicize it here and on the pitbull audio site and we'll throw up some links and all of that now we have in front of us today what's uh, on the menu this evening on the menu this evening in my arms right here i have it's actually a pitbull audio exclusive finish this is a esp ec 1000 qm or quilted maple and uh yeah, this was a finish run done exclusively for Pitbull Audio. It's a dark brown sunburst. I actually quite like it. 
Um, I like the uh, whiskey and darker flavored hues of the Sunburst world. And it actually has the same pickups that are on that uh, uh, FRX 401. It's uh, active pickups, a EMG 81 in the bridge and a 60 in the neck. And these things are hot as hell. If <laughs> if you're not familiar with active pickups, they uh, require a 9-volt battery uh, to power them. And this, just the output is insane on them. We were actually were having trouble trying to get the show set up. <laughs> yeah, because we're, we're uh, both going into the same amp through a, through a splitter. And and those pickups just kick my ass. I can't even, I can't even <laughs> compete with them when we try to play at the same time. I just get completely drowned out. And the way that we have it now, uh, our setup at the moment, if I turn down, it turns him down as well. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, I, can't, I just can't win. <laughs> no competing at the moment. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Paul. Well, we could do a quick, quick little sample. That's me. <laughs> and that's the big boy. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I, especially if you're in the, uh, hard rock and above world like metal uh, any kind of thrash doom anything like that uh, you're going to be familiar with the uh, active pickups because they push the hell out of your amp especially if you're playing high gain oh well, there's plenty of uh, players in other genres that are using them as well but yeah if uh it is a little bit of a pain if you have a non uh active guitar because you do have to route out uh don't know which camera i should show it to but like right here you do have to put in the 9-volt battery, and you do have to route out part of the guitar for it. So mm -hmm. most people just uh, purchase a guitar that already has that done for them. But, yeah, you want high output? Oh, we got your high output. Uh, I'm not too familiar with, uh, uh, with the active stuff. If you happen to be on, on stage and your battery starts dying, whatever, will it just go passive, or do you need to make sure that... Oh, you have to make sure. You have to make sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe, there, maybe there is someone out there that's making a... I know on some bases actually there yeah, are yeah, active I've seen that passives, on the, yeah. And I'm sure there's somebody out there that's doing a a backup system. Or um, Fishman now has like their fluence, which are active, but there's a rechargeable thing on the back of them. So there is all kinds of of uh, interesting stuff happening out in the pickup world for sure. But yeah, the uh, EMGs have been around. Uh, I want to say since the 80s, maybe or mm -hmm. early 90s. But yeah, they were the go-to. Uh, modification for anyone playing heavy music for quite a while but esp um, pretty much it, it seems to me just to be standard that uh they come with emgs yeah, it's almost yeah. it's almost uh rare to me that we get a uh version of a ec which is their single cuts here or any of the other guitars that has a seymour duncan or something yeah. else in there so or Schechter's also does the same thing they tend to come with active pickups with emgs it's like peanut butter and jelly or, or in this case uh tobacco and whiskey yeah pretty much yeah <laughs> i love that finish that's right that's gorgeous yeah it was uh it was a really a, a treat when we got these exclusive to us and also for those of you who uh like dive bombs and extra long string changes we all, there is a version of this in the dark brown sunburst with the floyd rose on there <laughs> extra long string changes <laughs> yeah pretty much man i <laughs> I got. I think I've ha owned one Floyd Rose guitar I, in my life, and I, I used to have one. Oh yeah, I love the utility. I love the cool tricks you can do and all, but it. Yeah, I, I'm all about the Jazz Master style <laughs> bridge now. A little bit easier, a little bit quicker, but yeah, we have both of them. Come on in and check them out. And I think it might have been a limited run, so that once they're gone, they are gone. Uh, also, along uh, with us today, we have three new treats from uh, from Nam this year. Uh, way huge electronics. We have the Russian pickle fuzz, which is uh, modeled after like the the green box Sovtech eras from mm -hmm. uh, Big Muffs from Electro Harmonics. Uh, way huge's interpretation of it, and the Conquistador, which, that, which they call a fuzz distortion, which is a gated fuzz distortion, which is pretty cool. Uh, way huge got, was popular in the '90s, or uh, well regarded. Uh, George Tripps made them, and even those original uh, the the two most people know is the Aquapus Delay and the uh, Swollen Pickle uh, Fuzz, which is uh, really well known for being like one of the best fuzzes out there for bass. And I used it on uh, baritones and extended range stuff. And uh, they went away for a while. And then uh, Dunlop actually bought the rights to the name and has resurrected them. So now you can get the Aquapus and there's like four, three or four variations now and get the Swollen Pickle and a couple of variations. There's a whole big line of them out there one one day we'll get i actually don't know if george trips is alive or not i <laughs> hope so maybe we can get him or someone from uh, dunlop to call in at some time we'll cover the rest of their stuff 
I swear, if I saw this thing like lying by the side of the road, I thought I would think it was an IED. <laughs> <laughs> that thing looks yeah. dangerous, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's got this like um like drab military green. Uh, it, it looks heavy, like a piece of heavy duty box. I, I it looks yeah. like there's just explosives in there, <laughs> right? Yeah, and it's it does look like a, some sort of military device you'd pull out of an ammo case in in an emergency. Yeah, but uh, they're they're gnarly fuzzes. I'm especially in love with the Conquistador. And following them just for fun, uh, there's a couple Electro Harmonics uh, new items that came out. Today we have the Blurst with us today, which is a modulated filter, like, kind of like an Ottawa, but instead of dynamically controlled, it's controlled with a uh, oscillator uh, that's in there, kind of taken from the modular synth world. Really cool, different flavor of filter. And they also, we don't have it yet, but they also uh, have the Canyon out or soon out which is a uh a multi-mode delay and looper that has some cool stuff and hopefully nice. we'll we'll get that soon but yeah these are our treats for today so do you use fuzz much uh i used to have a big muff that i really loved but it was really noisy and i had a bunch of pedals in my chain and that were barely getting by as as it were at the time <laughs> i had like a crappy power supply and throwing that thing in the mix was just cre creating a too much too much noise so I I ended up letting it letting it go, selling it to a friend. But I I miss it. It, it was an awesome sound. Other than that, I don't think I really own many fuzzes. I kind of prefer overdrives. Right on. Yeah, I'm a I love fuzzes. Uh, there's so much variety and so much crazy stuff out there. It's it's um, endless goodies to me. But yeah, I've had I've owned a couple of um, the old big muffs. I, I none that were too vintage, but I did have mm -hmm. briefly a a, a a green Sovtech era Russian mm. one, and I just didn't know what I had, nah. and ended up getting rid of it. Now they're like you can, uh, in great condition. You can they're like four hundred bucks if you find them on Reverb or eBay. But there's tons of great clones out there and variations on the circuit that people are doing, and we got one in front of us today. How about you try it? Since you are you are one of <laughs> Russian descent, the Russian pickle. Nice. And it does have that um, that famous mid uh, present mid range characteristic. Uh, how about you keep playing? And I'm gonna do. We we have them both that new now. I'm gonna do sweeps on the tone and on the gain. available in there it does it is a bit mid-range heavy and gets a little snarly at the top there on tone but it's uh it's really cool i mean again if you don't want to end up spending uh 400 bucks for uh for an original big muff this is a great option here and this is how it sounds with the with yeah, EMGs. With, yeah with active pickups
the uh, Big Mouths were also known for the sustain they created, and right. it is still present here on this Russian pickle, and that's pretty awesome. That, that's what I was used to be impressed about it. I think the most is a crazy sustain just forever. Yeah. That, uh, that cool. violin like sustain that mm -hmm. Santana got on all those early albums yeah. for the most part is, uh, 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 I could be wrong on this, but I think it's, uh, it's a, m a muff going into a pushed Marshall and later on a boogie. Mm -hmm. But that's the sound that, a sound that I grew up on just loving. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> nice. So you can go from uh, open it up and get a little snarly, you know, mm -hmm. a maybe a little bit towards like that harsher end of Jay Maskus sort of sound and Dinosaur Jr. But if you want that muted, uh, not muted, but you know, the tone turned down a little bit more bassy, you can still get some great stuff out of it. All that sustain, uh, and of course, it, it it also helps that we have these mahogany body maple cap <laughs> guitars yeah. that are you know always been known for this single cut shape. Les Paul and EC here, which pretty damn similar, uh, also helps out on that classic sustain sort of thing. But uh, yeah, it way huge has always made great circuits, and I mean they continue the tradition here with the Russian pickle for sure. Uh, where the oh, what was up? In Soviet Russia, pickle pickles you. <laughs> the pickle eat you. Uh, and uh, for they have a new one here, the Conquistador, which is a little bit more modern voice. It's gated, uh, like a noise gate on it. And you don't have control over the noise gate itself, but this thing can get snarly as all hell. So let's cross it over. Go ahead. Gnarly, right? <laughs> yeah, very gnarly. <laughs> so this might this might uh, appeal a bit more to say rhythm players or a lot of the uh, modern mathy or uh, what's the term now gent guys who are looking for a bit more control. Because uh, even like like a lot of the the new products coming out that are geared towards those modern players have gates built in. So uh, way huge has uh, has uh, followed suit here, and it's pretty cool. I I was testing it out at Pitbull Audio. And I was loving the sound of it through uh, uh, through the earthquake ramp in there. That's where that gate really comes in handy, or those sharp, quick, quick stops. Yeah, yeah, ex yeah. The uh, the speed again. That's speedy and rhythm players gonna fucking love. Are gonna love that. <laughs> that's all right. It's the internet. Man, I got 
to get me some uh, <laughs> some active pickups. Right. She had a Floyd Rose right about now. <laughs> yeah, that, that would have been a bit fun trying to do dive bombs. Yeah, right, yeah. It's about the closest I can get to one right now. Something along those lines. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> and you are doing some cool uh, stuff with the, with the toggle switch before. With the, oh, yeah. Like kind of like a kill switch. I, yeah, I'm, I, uh, my uh, Ivan has at home as I put a kill switch on, but... Actually, it might be better with the Russian pickles. And right, right. This is already gated. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, you want me to take me uh, take you to my leader? Is that what you were just saying? Uh, I would, but actually, our leadership situation is kind of weird right now. <laughs> No, 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 it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's like four years, eight at most, come back then. <laughs> How do I translate invade now into this? <laughs> you can't invade now, we're building walls everywhere. You, you, get, you got no chance. <laughs> you float over those walls and battleships. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I... Uh, I uh, like it's like that old Tom Morello trick, you know. Yeah, yeah. If you have two volumes, just turn one down or get a um, uh, off in the middle uh, switch put in. But yeah, I grew up listening to a ton of Rage Against the Machine, so as soon as I picked up any guitar, mm -hmm. that was just the first thing I was trying to do all the time. So my I use a push button one at, at uh, on my guitar at home, but anytime I pick up a, any Les Paul type of guitar with uh, two volumes like this, it's just something I immediately go to like idly just. Which one do you keep on and which one do you keep off? Bridge or neck? I keep off the neck usually and bridge. I'm, I'm just so used to the downward, downward. motion, yeah. yeah. Try that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, can't, I don't have enough power for any of this. <laughs> Mine's not. Yeah, I'm a dork. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not working out? No, I think the switch might be a little funky too. Yeah, it's. Uh, hey, what, we'll save it for the uh, when we have a maintenance we're, episode on here. We're actually, I, th I think just, I think the way this guitar is wired, if I if I kill. If I kill one knob, I'm, if I'm in the middle position, you're in the middle position, right? Oh or yeah, yeah, right here. Oh, but yeah, it's in the neck and middle dead, and then when I go to bridge. Oh oh. You can do it. No, it kills everything. Really? Yeah. Oh man. Or We're you know what? I think I think maybe this. I think the switch is sh is, is shot. shot. Yeah. Oh man. I think I. I think I killed this at the gig yesterday. I'm not getting anything out of this now. Oh no! I killed it. The the Les Paul is dead. Oh no! Or dying. Eh. But uh, we're we're actually gonna plan on having a uh, uh, Sean Hutchinson of Hutchinson's Guitar Repair, who is actually a, a Pitbull Audio's repair guy. We're, we're gonna have we should have him in one day and do an episode on basic guitar maintenance and upgrading your stuff. So, but um, yeah, he'll he'll be able to help you out there with some a, a new a new toggle oh, switch, maybe some new pots. Kill this thing right on the air. Oh, is it, really? Is it dead? Yeah, I think so. I'm not. I'm not getting anything out of anything now. Man. Oh no, this switch has been funky already. 
See, it's it's kind of loose in there, and oh, and it was at a weird angle too. I it's at a weird angle because show. it was loose, and to tighten it, I, <laughs> I it rotated the whole thing, so it was kind of sideways. And now that I was messing with it, I screwed it up. Oh man, <laughs> to, completely. Kill switch to, became a literal thing it's here. Killed, I killed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, it's one of the Pratt. I don't know. Pratfall would be quite the term, but you do modifications or or even just general wear and tear of your guitar. Mm. It's gonna, it's just gonna fall apart at one point. You have to replace stuff. Like on the uh, kill switches I use on my Ibanez, uh, I've had to replace it two or three times, and luckily it's a solder, uh, not a solder one, but one you just screw it into oh. the, the the cables into the, or the wires into the terminals. Mm. So it's easy for me to do at home. My soldering skills are not the best, but yeah, pots go, caps go. I, it all happens. Yeah, uh, I guess the, I guess the moral here is don't don't bring an act, uh, passive guitar to an active, <laughs> to, active, to an active pickup party. party. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just it. Yeah, the the nine volt battery just flew over and met some magnetic fields or something. Yeah, and just it took the soul it's, of your guitar. It's too 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 aggro, bro. <laughs> <laughs> es hey esp caters to a certain crowd, I guess. Sometimes yeah. then again, they do make some stuff you could use as a. Semi good semi hollow box. Wait, did you have your volume off? Is that why? I wasn't oh, son of a <laughs> bitch! Yeah, <laughs> there we go. We're oh, live. God damn it! Yeah. I, <laughs> so, yes. Okay. Yeah. See, it's. Uh, I think we even mentioned earlier. If I if I turn my volume down, it takes yours down. And I was sitting here with it, <laughs> with this. So now you can do some kill switch tricks. <laughs> Nope, and we're going to break commercial break anyway, but we'll be back in the next half with our blurst uh, from Electro Harmonics. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Sharpen the axe, intertalkradio.com. Powered by Pitbull Audio. All right, now we're out for real. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release, and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday. Welcome to Sharpen the Axe. Explore the bleeding edge of guitar and bass gear. Discover a sound uniquely your own and cut through the noise. With your hosts, Eric Lucero and Paul Berzetsky. Welcome back, everybody. We are here. We have another awesome pedal in front of us, a new one from Electro Harmonics. And this is the Blurst. Which is a uh, modulated filter. Think like a, a you know a wah or Ottawa, 
but in this case, instead of uh, like an envelope filter where it's uh, controlled by dynamics, uh, they took a cue from like uh, modular and other modular synths and other keyboard sort of stuff, and it has an internal oscillator. So you got controls for uh, volume, blend, resonance, rate, and range, and then you have uh, some mini switches. Uh, tap divide, which is pretty cool to see on here, which you can do quarter note, dotted eighth, or a triplet eighth. Uh, wave shape, which, uh, I mean, they're all kind of triangle wave, but you can choose uh, just standard normal triangle wave or one that's kind of going downwards or upwards, kind of like if you had an Ottawa that was going, uh, you know, down wall or up wall. It has a bypass switch and a tap tempo switch as well. And, uh, Oh, it has an expression jack, and you can assign a range, rate, or filter to the expression, or you can also connect it to a modular system with, that has CV input. So, do you, you use you use Ottawa once in a while, right? Or do you? Um, no, not regularly. No. No. Uh -uh. Oh, okay, I right on. Regular WA. I'm low tech. Yeah, I have a preference for a regular WA as well. I like having the manual control, but. Every now and then, something uh, an Ottawa or envelope filter is cool. And this one here is just something unique. So let's just turn it raw and everything's pretty much at high noon. Oh, me? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'll turn it off without the fuzz first. That's cool. Oh. That, oh, what does that remind me of? I guess like a, a, a Rhodes or something, like a, some kind of keyboard synth thing. Oh, like uh, when they put tremolo on a uh, on oh, Rhodes. On a Rhodes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right? it. That's it. And it has that feel. Let's actually turn up the resonance and range so we can get... Something a little wider out of that. Here, you play. I'm too underpowered. So let's try something a little different. Let's up the rate. Distorting a little bit, not not too bad. So you can get some cool um, alternate textures out of this. If you go down to uh, eighth triplet, you can have a very yeah, almost a ring modulator feel. I was above, up a bit too high in the uh, range. It wasn't cutting through as much, but here we are. Now it's really here. Nice. Getting pretty with it. <laughs> So uh, let's try some of the other shapes. Let's go with, this will be like a, a, I think this is the. Wow. 
Let's try the other direction, which I thought I had some fun with this yesterday. That's rad. I like that. So when we tried this out at the store, we uh, thought, okay, fuzz in front of this should sound pretty cool. So hit the pickle. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I almost forgot. Let's see. Turn the rate down. So you can get some cool talking sounds out of this. And, um, you know, you want to hook it up and control this manually. You could always uh, plug in a expression pedal from, uh, from Mission Engineering mm -hmm. or whatever your particular choice is. Or hook it up to uh, the Electroharmonics 8 step, which is their sequencer, and really have it cut out exactly where you want. There's a lot of cool options in this, and it was, it's a different take on that filter. It's pretty rad. I'm enjoying it. Very, very cool. Blurst. The blurst. It's a blurry burst. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a blurry <laughs> burst of colorful goodness, which yeah. is also explains the uh, crazy graffiti-inspired uh, yeah. graphics on it. I dig it, the street art style. Yeah, I, I really dig electroharmonic stuff. They they always come up with really kind of trippy, original, cool stuff with you know really good tones. Yeah, and they were, I think, are pretty much considered to be one of the first really boutique companies since the 70s. Yeah. They've always had something that was a little bit to the left, a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, and that old stuff is super collectible now, too. But, yeah, always doing well. Always doing well. Um, why don't you play around with something, and I'll see if I could get our guest on the line. Yes, here. we got uh, John, a uh, a rep at Pitbull Audio for... Uh, uh, for ESP guitars coming up soon. I'll see what I can try here. And uh, once you, what's kind of cool on the blurst here is they give you a very wide sweep of range and resonance control. So you want to make it a very, um, a very low bassy sort of uh, uh, range on here. It's possible if we take the resonance down. Mm-hmm. 
So you could do something like an intro to a song uh, or, uh, you know, a, a passage or a, a low mix track on your recording that has a little bit of character with, uh, with this. And, uh, yeah, there's plenty of possibility. And I like that a lot of some uh, other companies are doing this now where they have a CV input available. Uh, I think Chase Bliss does that. A couple other companies do because there's I've always known a keyboard and synth players to sometimes throw in guitar effects into their chain for control or something that just wasn't being built modularly. So for the keyboard and synth players out there who happen to be listening, well, this is pretty rad. Another option for you that you can control with your setup. And, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely come in on into Pitbull Audio. Try this out with me. See what you can do. I'm just over here making alien noises, Paul. I I don't know what's going on anymore. You're, you're calling home to the mothership? I am. Um, it's time for me to return to my planet now that it's uh, all kind of gone to shit over here right now. <laughs> uh, I believe our guest is on the line. Are you there, John? Yes, uh, how are you doing? Good. How are you, man? Thank you for, uh, for, for being our guest today. Yes, no problem. So uh, there's plenty of new stuff going on with ESP. Um, I know that you guys have a whole bunch of new signature models. Uh, you have the Sparrowhawk, uh, which is Bill Kellyher's signature model, uh, one of his, you guys have, and he's from Mastodon. And you guys have yeah, one from... A, and yeah, and you guys have a... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, that's a really cool guitar. It's like one of, one of my favorites in the lineup this year. Uh, it's really unique, awesome finish. Both of his models are, are extremely cool. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, a lot. He's he's a definitely one of the top guitar heroes out today, and I mean, he was a, a Gibson artist for uh, a, a bit there. So it's really cool to see hey, him, uh, you know, try out something new. And that Sparrowhawk body shape is completely new and original, right? Yeah, yeah, it resembles ones that you know he's played in the past. That, uh, but he pretty much, you know designed it exactly how he wanted it and um yeah really really nice playing guitar ebony fingerboard all mahogany body and neck and uh <laughs> excuse me that's on, on both of his models those are the, the specs and uh yeah those are those are probably my favorites uh, of the, the new stuff this year nice and he uh if, if i got this correct he uses lace pickups and he has his signatures put in there correct yes Nice, nice. Yeah. And you guys... Uh, a lot of people are liking us. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of the, the heavy players are moving to lace pickups. I mean, of course, you got uh, uh, Bill from Mastodon. Uh, I know um, Matt Pike of Sleep and High on Fire has two different signature models and lace for, for both bands. So uh, lace is definitely getting some love from the heavy community. Yeah. Uh, and you yeah, guys... They've been doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. They're great, great pickups. Uh, you guys also have a new one of uh, Brian uh, uh, Head from Corn, right? He has gone from Ibanez to ESP, correct? Yes, that that's a really huge one as well. Both of those are, are really big news for ESP this year. And yeah, Head has been with Ibanez forever, and uh, he just came on board with ESP. And same with Bill, they just like the way they're treated. You know, everybody at ESP is really cool. They understand the needs of the artist. And they, they've put those needs first. And, uh, you know, that's the big difference in, you know, why they'd rather deal with people they get along with. And uh, it's a very cool thing. For sure, for sure, man. Now, uh, outside of the signature models, uh, what else can you tell us about what's new in the ESP lineup this year that we should get excited about? A lot of cool stuff a lot of cool models um you know they're uh, you can check them out on espguitars.com and um there's you know something for everybody you know from entry level to uh the custom shop from japan and uh the usa models this year they've uh they've added some really cool colors and um you know 
the USA made ESPs are really nice. Um, you know, depending on on what someone wants to spend on a guitar, there's you know a, a whole world of options that they can get the guitar that's just right for them and the, and the finishes they like and uh, a lot of cool body shapes. So, you know, otherwise in the lower end, there's a, a couple of new, um, an EC-256 uh, has a couple of new finishes. There's a, a see-through purple sunburst with a flame top and, uh, and a, a blue one as well. And uh, you just get a lot of bang for the buck with those. They're, you know, for $3.99, be next to impossible to find anything as good a quality for that price point. And uh, other other ones, uh, you know, there, there's uh, the classic body shapes, the the M shape, which you know Kirk Hammett has used for a long time. He's probably the most well known used to use that one. Uh, there's a new uh, design that he came up with that uh, that they released at NAM. And um, and uh, uh, Pitbull Audio has got some on the way, uh, some of the the LTD as well as the ESP Japan versions. Nice. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a really cool one. Yeah, and it's, I got to say, over at Pitbull Audio, we've been pretty lucky with the ESP. I mean, we do have the 256s and the 400s, which are sort of that entry level, but we even have some of your. Uh, we we do have the e, the ESP USAs. And we've even had some of the Japanese-made exhibition guitars. So from the from the most entry level to the most uh, prestige, we have them all there. And uh, I mean, I saw some of them over the past week roll in. Like we have a beautiful EC that has a uh, red flame top, some uh, uh, brass hardware, and uh, inlaid skull in, out of like abalone and a, a stone that looks like red jade on it. There's some very awesome one-of-a-kind stuff over there right now that uh, if you are an ESP fan, you should definitely check out. But we've always had a great yeah, relationship was, uh, with ESP. Yeah, yeah, you guys are, uh, you know, Pitbull Audio is our, definitely our favorite place and uh, there's a great selection. And, uh, yeah, that, that red uh, red top one is uh, was one of my favorites at NAMM. And, uh, yeah, just some amazing work coming out of the custom shop. And, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely enjoy working with Pitbull a lot. And uh, we've got a clinic coming up at the end of the month, or actually uh, early March. March 3rd is a Friday night with uh, legendary bassist Buddy Brunel, and he'll have his signature model there. And uh, so that'll be a great event for uh, you know, bass enthusiasts to come out and check out. For sure, and we actually yeah. teased that at the at the top of the show, pretty much that uh, you are going to have Bunny Brunell in, and it's going to be March third. Yes. Awesome. And uh, is uh, is his uh, signature model an LTD, or is there a Japanese uh, uh, upscale version too? Um, good question. I, I believe he does have a Japanese one as well. Yeah. Nice. Right on. I, I knew him. Uh, I knew growing up, I always used to see him in the Carvin catalogs, which is a uh, a San Diego brand. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was very surprised to hear him jump after so long going to ESP. But as uh, as you said, John, you guys are very understanding with the artists that you work with, and uh, you know get the job done for them. It's it's pretty amazing to see how many people jump from other brands to ESP over uh, year after year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, um, is there anything well, else? Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, is there anything else? I was going to say they, they love the product and, uh, and you know, they love working with us and uh, we've built really strong relationships and then they refer their friends that are touring artists as well and uh, it's definitely growing continuously. For sure, absolutely. Is there is there anything else coming up uh, in ESP like throughout, you know, now that's post-NAM down the line we should get excited about or, or nothing that's uh, public yet? Nothing public yet. There, you know, they've got these new ones that they just showed at the Winter Nam, and you know, those will be um, in stores soon. And uh, Pitbull already has uh, quite a good handful of them, and they got you know more on order as they become available. 
And then, you know, at Summer Nam, they'll have some new stuff as well. But for right now, you know, they've got uh, everything that's in the current lineup is, um, you know, on ESPGuitars.com and uh, PickleAudio.com. Uh, can be seen there. So it's, yeah, really, really exciting stuff. You know, they keep uh, outdoing themselves every year. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and I I got a couple pictures on my cell phone of some of those exhibition ones that we got in stock, and I'll put them on the uh, Sharpen the Axe uh, Facebook page so you guys can check them out. And if you want to happen to buy yourself a uh, a, a very very awesome, beautiful uh, Japanese made instruments, by all means, come on in. We'll even take them down, and you can check them out yourself. And always, it's always awesome when you come in, John. And thank you very very much for. Uh, for calling in and give and telling us about what's new with um, with ESP guitars. Yeah, my pleasure. Anytime, man. I love working with you guys. You know, everyone at Pitbull is extremely cool and extremely knowledgeable about everything they got. Um, you know, for whatever your needs are, you know, guitar, guitar amps, uh, audio recording, DJ. It's you know, you guys are the pros. Right on. Thank you very much, man. We we definitely appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, pop in soon, dude. Definitely. We'll see you soon. Thank you, bud. Thanks, John. Cool. Thanks, Eric. All right, take care. Take care. Take care. Very cool. Yeah. it's And I got to say, like, uh, any time I've gone to NAMM, the, the, the Master Luthiers at ESP, I mean, you see some amazing works of art. That, like, you can't believe that it's a playable instrument that they mm-hmm. do. Like, uh there was one that was like a, a Death's Scythe, the most metal guitar I've ever seen, <laughs> with the blade coming through the body of it. Remember a, a year or two ago, there was the uh, like angel sort of shaped one. But yeah, those guys have some insane imagination and do some crazy stuff on the custom shop side, mm-hmm. which uh, I should mention also, if you are looking to to have a custom ADSP done, by all means, come in and talk to us too. We'll, we'll get it set up for you and have the guitar of your dreams uh in your hands before you know it. Sweet. Nah. Or if you, or if you uh, are just looking for something unique, well, like I said earlier, we are the only ones that have these dark brown sunburst ESPs. Let me see that thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for uh, Paul today. He's he's gotten a uh, the the passive. I've gotten uh, the short straw. Yeah. Oh yeah. Whoops. Wreaking, wreaking havoc all day today. Whoa. Here, there we go. <laughs> wow, that's loud. <laughs> I was trying to get some like Eddie Van Halen sort of uh, yeah. like like slow phasing thing going on, but I, I completely just misread the the range on this <laughs> <laughs> on the blurst here. But yeah, it 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 actually does make playing, especially if you're the shreddy type, so much easier because you can have a slightly lighter touch but still get the same output with the the active pickups. Yeah, th- thinner neck profile, big fat jumbo frets on this. Yep. Nah, I forget the rest. Oh yeah, that's uh, again. That's one thing that uh, ESP got popular for as um, the age of the shredder became uh, became more apparent. Say like late '80s, early '90s, was yeah. that they had the thinner necks, jumbo frets, mm. m- faster playing necks. Yeah, yeah. 
Super cool. Beautiful guitar. Right. But yeah, that we ha as uh, John was saying, we are stocked with um from from the most introductory to the most professional collectors grade stuff. We have it all there and you're more than welcome to come in. Check it out. I'll go pull some off the warehouse racks for you and you can see what you like. And uh, if you're not in the San Diego area but would like to check out the Bunny Brunel Clinic, we're going to be doing a Facebook Live broadcast uh, yep. of it. It's going to go out on Pitbull's Facebook, on Inner Talk Radio, and on Sharpen the Axe. So whoever you're following, and uh, just keep, keep, keep an eye out. Uh, March 3rd, correct? March 3rd, as we got revealed to us today. I didn't even know that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. T tune in. Defin definitely. I uh, I didn't kind of want to mention it earlier, but yeah, when I saw Bunny Brunell, it was still when he was with Carvin. It was at, at the Carvin. Oh, there we uh, go. Yeah. <laughs> Carvin <laughs> spot. Uh, but yeah, I guess he found better representation with, with ESP. Well, but it, the clinic should be should be dope. He's a monster player. For sure. And actually, I mean, there's a lot of people who are very, uh, very happy with the uh, ESP bases. I mean, uh, Rocco Prestia, that's his last name, right from Tower of Power. Oh. He has a signature model through um uh through ESP uh that which is a very popular seller for us. But then again, you also got guys like uh, Tom Araya from Slayer has a signature model as well. And uh I well, off the top of my head, I can't think of who else has uh is playing ESP bases, but there's quite a number out there and they come with some uh I think also EMGs or other uh active pickups. Oh, there we go. Time yeah, to go. We're out of time. <laughs> Uh, so tune in next time uh, and download our app, uh, entertalkradio.com. Follow yes. this show and all our other shows. Uh, and don't forget to sign up for the contest, Mission Engineering, and all the, the pedal board giveaway. Yeah, the, you can win a full-on rig. It's really awesome. But uh, until next time, guys, I'm Eric Lucero. That's I'm Paul Berezetsky. I'm sorry I said your name for you. We'll see you next time. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios.